basic punching. We're just gonna cover some very easy um, intro punches. And I've gone over this stuff before, but I wanna string it together in one video and talk about each individual punch. So I like to do my initial system when I'm working with beginners based on my basic four punch combination. And that's a jab, cross, hook, cross. One, two, three, and four. So everything I do is based off of those four combinations. So the first combination, just real quick, would be just the jab. Okay, that's basic punch number one. Number two is the cross. So when I say basic combo number two, it's a jab cross. When I say three, three is the hook. So we just add it on for the basic combo, jab, cross, hook. And then the fourth combination in the series is jab, cross, hook, cross. So I'll teach that initially. After I teach that, we have our add-ons, which are gonna be kicks, elbows, knees, defense techniques. Um, but once we have that basic four down with the footwork and things like that, it's super easy to add the rest of it together without having to spend a big amount of time or a long amount of time just explaining the setup for those extra strikes, the kicks, the elbows, knees, things like that. So that's what we're gonna cover first. So basic punching, first and foremost, we're just gonna cover the jab. And I wanna talk about um, how I wanna teach it first before we get into any other variations of it. I like to use it to close the distance. So that's how I'm going to initially teach it to somebody is I want them to use the jab to close the distance. So um, when I'm lining up with somebody for pads or we're doing bag work, I always tell the person they need to be out of punch range. And what that means is if I throw punches at them or they throw punches at me, neither of us can hit each other. What he needs to do before he can hit me is take a step in. A little step in. Now I'm in his punch range, but he's also in my punch range. So then he needs to step out. So you step in, you do your punch and you step out. And that's gonna be not just for the jab, but for everything else that we do. So to teach the jab, what I, what I want everyone to do is I want them to step in, put their lead hand out and then step out immediately. Timing that step in is important too. So when we're initially learning it, you can take that step in, get into your stance, throw the jab and then step out. And then as you get more fluid with it, you can step as you jab and then step out. And that's kind of what I want to see. So go ahead, he's gonna do that a few times. And then as he's doing it, I want him to start focusing on, keep going, turning it over, making sure he's hitting with the front two knuckles. Also making sure that that shoulder's coming to that chin and he doesn't need to get over exaggerated or fancy either. I don't want to see that elbow come up. It should be a corkscrew and turned at the end. Okay, and I have lots of videos where I, I show variations of the vertical jab, um, the hammer jab, things like that. Just real basic. I want to step in, turn, and come back out. So that's our basic jab, and that's how I want you guys to practice it, either shadow boxing or on the bag, is with that step in, turn, and step out. We just used jab, which is number one in the system, the four punch system, to close the distance. Now that we're in range, of punching, he can add the cross, which is his two. So we're just gonna focus on just the two. I'm not gonna make him step in just yet. I wanna talk about it. So throw your two and freeze it. Okay, so what he's did is when he throws this right hand or his back hand, he's pivoting on the back foot. His knees are bent. This is good. Shoulder is by his chin, so he's protected there. And he turned his fist and hit me with the front two knuckles. Now when he goes back, do it one more time, do it nice and slow, throw the two. I wanna make sure his elbow doesn't come up first. So I would re make him redo that. I did not like that. I wanna make sure, go ahead and relax. I wanna make sure that when we throw it, just like that jab, we wanna come straight out and turn. When we throw that cross, we wanna come straight out and turn as we throw it. We don't wanna bring our elbow up and then throw it. It opens us up and it shows our opponent what we're doing. So, real quick, refresher. He's gonna sit down on his, on his legs, make sure his weight's um, on his toes. He's gonna turn his hip and his shoulder and everything all at once and hit me with that right hand. Okay, so that is number two. So to make that, um, in the combination, the basic number two combo is jab cross. So now he's out of range. He's gonna step in with the jab, land the cross, and then step out. Okay, so that's number two in our basic one through four combinations. Jab cross, step out. That's our second basic punch. Number three is a left hook or a lead hook. Again, if you're southpaw, but left hook. Probably the one people struggle with the most out of these. And there's just a couple of things I want to make sure you do as a beginner. You can see hundreds of different coaches and videos talk about throwing it, um, what I call a coffee mug hook being the right way or an overhand being the right way. I don't want you to focus on that. Do what feels comfortable. 
your, your main focus is going to be making sure that when we're throwing a proper hook as a beginner, that our elbow is um, parallel to the floor. Our forearm is parallel to the floor. I don't want your elbow below your fist or above your fist. I want your elbow in line with your fist that's hitting. So I don't care if you turn it overhand or a coffee mug, but you do want to make sure you're hitting with the, the front two knuckles and you want to try to keep your wrist straight as you hit. I teach both because I've learned both and I have my reasons for why I like to throw a coffee mug hook and why I throw the overhand depending on range, but I'm not going to get into that right now either. When we throw this real quick, just so you can see my feet for kickboxing, we want to pivot on our back leg. Okay. That's another thing I was taught naturally and in boxing, what you're going to want to do and your body's going to want you to do is pivot on that front leg. However, for kickboxing, that really opens us up and takes away our checks. So if we get attacked on this lead leg, it's now going to take us way longer to get our leg back in check. So we want to avoid that for Muay Thai and kickboxing. So depending on why you're doing this hook right now, whether it's for boxing or kickboxing, make that, um, make that part of your training. If it's kickboxing, we're going to turn that back hip and that takes a little getting used to. Naturally, you want to pivot on that front foot, which is a stronger punch, easier punch to learn, but depending on your sport, it's going to change. So real quick with Orlando here now, he's already in range. We're just going to start in range. I want you to freeze your hook. He's going to throw it and freeze. So he's exaggerating it a little bit. His elbow's too high. Don't move it. It's too high right now. I don't like it. And he's trying to be picture perfect, which I appreciate. Don't focus on being too perfect. Sometimes when you overthink your technique, you're just going to end up screwing yourself up and that's not how you're actually going to perform. I'd like to see it here and I'd like to see it here. Okay. When we throw these hooks too, relax for a quick second. Don't overthrow. You don't need to go way past your body or your face or anything like that. That's just going to leave you open. Make sure when you throw these hooks, no matter which way you pivot, you're stopping right through the face. You don't need to go all the way around and overthrow and slow yourself down. Come to your target and come back. Okay. And that's what I want him to focus on right now. Nice and easy. We're going to scoop back so you can see the footwork a little bit. It's nice and easy. Left hook. Good. Nice and relaxed. Okay. So now we're going to put that third punch, which is the hook into our basic one through four combination. So we're on number three. So he's going to do it all jab, cross hook. He starts out of range, steps in with that jab, throws the cross on the hook and then steps out one, two, three, jab, cross hook, and he's out. We'll do that a few times. You have the hook down now. So you have a jab, a cross and a hook. The, the fourth part of this basic four punch combo, super easy. It's the same as number two. It's just another cross. Everyone in every gym has got a little bit different number system. The one, two, and three always seem to be, be the same at any gym, a jab, cross, and a hook. And then depending on where you go, the four varies. Most of the time it's going to be a rear uppercut or a, a right hook, maybe even a body shot. I keep it the same as my number two. So it throws people off sometimes. Your two and your four are just a straight right cross. That's again, that's the way I learned it. It's the way I built my system. So that's why I like to use it. So for the basic four punch combos that I teach, it's jab, cross, hook, cross. And since we already covered the cross, I'm just going to go ahead and go right into that combination for you guys. So every time he throws, he's going to step in because he should be out of range, which he is. He's going to step in with that first punch, finish with a two, three, four, which is a uh, cross, hook, cross, and then back out. So it's step in, jab, cross, hook, cross, step out. Again, jab, cross, hook, cross, step out. We'll do that a few times. Okay. And that's your basic four punch combination. And now we can add on super easy to that with a bunch of additional strikes to start advancing the game and advancing your fight IQ without it getting too complicated.